I opened up Better Bodies in uh, Lower Manhattan in the fall of 1982. The idea to open up Better Bodies sort of sprung from the fact that there was a lack of hardcore gyms uh, for really women and men to train at. The idea of clothing, uh, you know, that's not revolutionary. All gyms open up and they have a few articles of clothing because it's probably a good way to promote if somebody's wearing your shirt or your pants out and about. Um, I also felt that you know people did love the name Better Bodies. It has a great alliteration. Uh, ironically, it didn't have the word gym in the name. And there was a moment where that was an asset because early on, the idea of a hardcore gym to a beginner can be intimidating, where Better Bodies didn't really have that attached to it and uh, the logo did not have a big muscle man or a big hairy gorilla. Um, it just was a really kind of a cool graphic of a barbell. With the Night of Champions happening in New York every year, I saw that as a really great marketing opportunity. So I thought, well, everybody's traveling to New York for this contest, they need a place to shoot. Because nobody was really sort of addressing that. They would have to scramble and, oh, where are we gonna shoot? It probably still happens today even. So I let it be known that if you visit New York and there's a show, everybody's welcome to the gym. Bodybuilders, photographers, uh, no charge and just make it a fun day or two after the contest. And that's really, I think, what launched the clothing brand. Because if you look back at those magazines during that period, you see everybody wearing my shirt. You remember there was no social media. This was everybody waiting every month for Flex Magazine or Muscle Mag. And then people would see that, they see the shirt. And of course, back then it became a mail order business people would you know call up or find you you know dial information again no internet and ask if they could buy a better body shirt and then Gladys wearing a shirt of course helped because she worked her way up quite quickly in the ranks of the pro female bodybuilders uh, to finishing top six in an Olympia you know uh, popular people can drive brands quite beautifully yeah we didn't have the word influencer back then but today in social media you would call them influencers uh, people wanted to do what they did, whether it was training, uh, a method of training, or the, the brands that they were wearing. And I thought if they could wear a Gold's Gym, they could wear a Better Body sh shirt as well. Right. I think the big uh, game changer for me was when I was approached by Europeans to take the brand internationally. And I entered a licensing deal with them and uh, then Global Better Bodies was born. Um, and that was the start, that was going to FIBO in the, in the 80s. And uh, really it became sort of a global brand at that point. Bodybuilding is seen as a very solo endeavor. You know, you're training alone, granted you have a training partner, but it's still sort of solo. When you're on stage, you're alone. It's really more of a team sport if you think about it. On stage, it's a solo sport, but to get to the stage, it takes a team. These days, it probably takes a village. I had the idea, okay, it's really more of a team, and I created Team Better Bodies. And up until that point, nobody had even thought to put those two things together. Now you see team everything, but Better Bodies was the first. I was the first to attach team to the word. The other cool thing about uh, when it went global was the ability to do uh, seasonal lines, which I had not done. My, my line was really quite basic gym basics and uh, things you know expanded tremendously um, with that relationship that I developed. Uh, also the creation and shooting of catalogs which was something I had never done and uh, we had had shot in some very exotic places but I was really stoked when I was told we were going to be shooting in New York and that was really exciting. It was uh, Gary Stridham, uh, Rick Valente, Bertle Fox. Uh, we hired a couple of local models as well and then myself was an, as a model. And uh, it was incredible. I mean, we just marched the bodybuilders out there 
and crowds just appeared. I mean, you can imagine Gary Stridham in a tank top in the middle of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in front or, you know, wherever we were, Times Square. Uh, we really had huge crowds gathering and there they were flexing and posing with that line of Better Bodies clothing. So. It's just really exciting uh, for me to be sitting here speaking about the history of Better Bodies. It's almost 40 years now, and then Better Bodies really sort of coming full circle, kind of back home to its roots, to uh, New York, New York. You know, I, I couldn't be more proud of the brand and, you know, where the brand is. It's stunning to me that it's lasted decades. I don't think there are many brands uh, out there that can say that. There's a very few that have history. You know, it's nothing to sit at a computer today and maybe Photoshop a logo and, you know, uh, go to a local printer and all of a sudden you have a clothing line. You know, I, I'm just like a, a proud father, I guess.